Well, hello YouTube, it's me, Fortmaster, and welcome back to another Game Theory Reaction. Sonic's rings are a scam? Uh... Okay? Um... I mean, granted, size for size, I would think that, like, say, like, a gold coin from Mario would be worth more than a ring from Sonic, just because, you know, there, you'd think there'd be more gold in it, given that we've kind of seen the size that both a coin and a ring are pretty big. But also, coin, uh, the the rings are weird, because, granted, this is coming from someone who hasn't played a lot of Sonic games, but rings are lives. They're not, like, currency, unless you classify them as currency for life. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> or is MatPat going to be going into the whole thing that even if the rings are made out of gold, the, the price of actually manufacturing them in the shape of a ring like that just wouldn't be... Sort of like how the Canadian government stopped making pennies, because for a penny who what that was worth one cent, it cost like 1.2 cents to make, so it just wasn't feasible anymore. I just, I, I, I was looking at this title for at least a couple minutes before I started recording, and uh, I, I, I want to know what this video is going to be about, so let's actually get this thing started. So as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it yet for some reason. Corner video will be leading to my film theory reaction, and with all that out of the way, let's get this thing started then, shall we? Rings, one of the most iconic collectibles in all of gaming. They protect Sonic from harm. Yeah. They give him extra lives. And most impressively of all, they fuel the supersonic state, giving him yeah. insane amounts of power and an awesome soundtrack. There's also the unofficial sound effect of gas station cash registers for some reason. Because of all of these reasons, Sonic's rings are okay. invaluable. Or are they? This is America, after all. Everything's got itself a price. Everything uh, is worth something. And considering that these rings have been used as a currency in past games, it means that these rings are no exception. The only question I'm left with, though, is Sonic a wealthy hedgehog, or is he a broke boy? Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the show that liked theory so much it put a ring on it. Speaking of rings, the Sonic series is full of them. Blue rings, dark rings, dash rings, red star rings, you <laughs> name them, they're there. Yeah, but there's a lo what certainly a lot of, of them. Sonic's rings, is it? Yeah, no, you're thinking ones. about these guys, the gold rings that are scattered throughout every stage of every game. For years, I've wondered how much these things would possibly be worth. I mean, they're just giant gold rings floating in the sky after all half the size of most of the characters in the franchise. You'd think that they'd be worth a pretty penny. But before I could even think about yeah. writing this episode, Sega did something I never anticipated. They gave us an answer. And they did it in probably the weirdest way they could have, through a Roblox game. Sonic Speed Simulator is an officially licensed game by Sega of America. And in it, you can collect rings that can be used to buy items. Although instead of a shop like past games, this one actually uses vending machines, where you essentially gamble for random cosmetics. I so this is a Roblox game made by Sega. Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It would make a comment about how all of this is being targeted at children, but then again, Sonic ain't exactly new to the world of casinos. Anyway, yeah. in the game, Sega offers you the chance to buy rings using Robux, the in-game currency of Roblox. A currency oh. that, would you know, it has itself a real-world exchange rate. Oh, God, he's... He's going to be using the in-game exchange rates to figure out how much they're worth. Oh, okay. The base price you can buy is a thousand rings for 14 Robux, which means that you're getting about 71 rings to the Robux. Sounds like a pretty darn good deal to me. One Roblox dollar for 71 three foot tall gold rings? Sign me up. So now all you need to do is convert Robux. Then again, you're also you're you're also talking as if they're 24 karat, which uh, gold is a very soft mineral, so it's oftentimes you know, alloyed with other things, making it a lower carrot so that it's more structurally strong. Usually, in, granted, I haven't seen a lot of jewelry, but for most I've seen, it varies from like 14 to like 18. Sometimes you get really low, it's like 10 or something. But at that point, you're starting to get to the point where it's almost getting like 50-50. Robux to dollars, and we've got ourselves the answer. The base rate you purchase Robux for right now is 400 Robux for $5. That right there is a conversion rate of 80 Robux to the dollar. So if we okay. can get about 71 rings for one Robux and 80 Robux for one dollar, then Sega's officially saying that one giant solid gold ring in its game is worth, drumroll please, 
0.00017 US dollars. Huh? <laughs> that, that, that can't be right. Yeah, it's not just worth a penny. It's worth a very tiny fraction of a penny. Can it? I mean, we're talking about what looks to be a giant golden hula hoop. A low-end gold wedding ring is gonna run you nearly $250, but here we need 57 of them to make a single penny? No, I refuse to accept this. They clearly didn't think this one through. Yeah, either that or the rings are not actually gold. They're made out of like some other like element or whatever it is that's not as valuable as gold, but just looks like it or they are very, very low carat. Actually, I, while I'm on this, what is the actual percentages of like gold in the various levels of carat? Okay, so if we're looking a 10 carat, a 10, 10 carat gold is 41.7%. So a 10 carat is under half of it is actually gold. Then 14 carat is when it's at least half, it's like 58.3. 18 carat is 75% gold, and then 24 carat is 100% gold or as pure as you can get gold. Okay, that answers some questions. Thank you. It isn't the first time that Sega of America has done our blue boy dirty. Anyone yeah. remember that time that they told us Sonic was brown? No, I'm gonna oh. be the one to find the real oh, yeah. value of that these That was a rings. weird one. And in the process, I'm gonna upend your entire Roblox operation, friendos. Finally, it's a Sonic theory that the internet can get behind because I'm on your side, Sonic. You and I are on the same team. Today, oh. I'm gonna find out how much coin you got in your pockets that are full of rings. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. My initial approach was to fight fire with fire. If these rip-off rings were coming from an in-game store, I wanted to see if there were other in-game stores, one from real Sonic games, that could offer us a real answer. Of all uh -huh. the Sonic games out there, oh. the amount of shops that use rings as currency is actually surprisingly small, almost as if- Uh, though, I did just think of one thing. I mean, granted, the whole thing of it being, like, really low might literally just because of, like, wherever, like, Sonic's world is might just have a really bad conversion rate with the US dollar like it just it might be really weak that might that might literally be it we might have like like a post world war 1 germany on our hands where it costs like trillions of deutschmarks to buy a loaf of bread which geez, that's that sounds really depressing unfortunately if these rings were never intended to be used as an in-game currency in the first place. Now, besides Speed Simulator, there are only five official Sonic games with shops. Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Riders, Sonic 06, Sonic Unleashed, and Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood. Sadly, okay. though, the information ended up being a bit of a wash. You see, two of these shops are black markets, which means that these items are illegal to buy and sell, thereby making their prices inflate wildly and not really uh, okay, reliable for okay. the comparisons that we're trying to make. And while the other three games all feature shops that are completely legal, Legal, the items that these shops are selling make it impossible to get an accurate price. Sonic uh. 06, for instance, it sells gems, but they only really show us the color and cut, which aren't exactly unique to any particular gemstone family. Sonic Chronicles sells clothes, and I think we all know how inconsistent clothing prices can be when you consider <laughs> brands and sizes. Finally, mm. there's Sonic Unleashed, which does have itself the most realistic store, selling produce from various parts of the globe. But even then, those prices were inconsistent when you take into account exchange rates and inflation. So you're telling me that it costs 40 uh, rings for a bunch of Indonesian bananas that would typically cost 70 cents here in the real world, but 30 rings for a New York apple that will normally cost you a dollar from a street vendor? You see how the numbers and proportions there just don't match up? So in true New York fashion, yeah. I'm just gonna have to say, forget about it. So if I can't rely on purchasing power to value these rings, I have to go deeper. I have to roll up my sleeves. I and you have to figure out what the actual size of the rings are and how much gold is actually in them. You have to do it the old-fashioned way. Pixel. I have to use pixel measurements. And Woo! I have to use it for science. Speaking of science, I actually need your help with another experiment I'm doing. This is also going to help with an upcoming FNAF episode. That's right, you can be a part of a FNAF episode. Some oh. of you might remember a few years ago when I asked you guys to take the Myers-Briggs personality test. That way I was able to break down what personality types you were. Well, I've got some more theories 
theories on the horizon, a FNAF theory in particular that needs some of that data. I also have a bunch of ideas for TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter that are in the works that are gonna need that same information. You can actually follow us at Team Theorist on Twitter and Instagram and at Game Theorist Official on TikTok if you wanna see those theories when they drop. Yep, we have official social channels now, finally, after years and years. It's actually really cool. There's a lot of fun stuff on them. Anyway, the TLDR is that this community's grown a lot over the last couple years, so to get the most accurate results possible, I've put a link to a survey down in the description below with all the questions that I need to help me solve this upcoming FNAF theory, as well as a couple of these social videos that are going to be rolling out over the next couple of weeks. If you okay. just do me a favor and fill out that questionnaire well, I finish this episode, that would be super duper helpful for those upcoming theories. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go- I have done one of these theory surveys before, literally just earlier this week for, I think it was, I think it's for style theories about like, you know, ugly Christmas sweaters and stuff like that. But who knows, I might actually make uh, myself filling out the survey part of the video, who knows? We go back to figuring out what exactly the value of a sonic ring is. The first test we have to do is figure out what exactly these rings are made of. Sure, we assume that they're gold just based on the yellow color, but yeah. is that actually true? They could just be gold colored, or gold plated, or some sort of gold alloy. So let's yeah, exactly. how rings actually behave in game to find out what we're working with. First, we know that whatever Sonic's rings are made of, it's heavier than water. Considering when you get hit in places like Hydrocity Zone or aquatic ruins the scattered rings sink that right there gives us a big old check mark for gold but also pretty much yeah literally every other metal because like yeah i don't think there's any like metal that's lighter than water or less dense, I should say. Any other metal, so not really narrowing the field down. Secondly, look at this. When using the lightning shield in games like Sonic 3, you're able to draw the rings towards you like a magnet. That is huge, because it immediately kills the idea that the rings are made of gold. Or, gold pure, or at least magnetic. pure gold. This means that the rings are either made of some other metal completely, or if they are still made of gold, there has to be some other metal mixed in that is magnetic in the proper proportions. What exactly do I mean by that? Well, you might have heard gold being given labels like 20 4 carat, 18 carat, 12 carat, all that stuff. Well, carat in this case is a measure of purity. It was literally just looking this up. Okay, sorry, Matt Pat, for doing your job for you can be as low as 1 or as high as 24. The higher the carat, the more pure and valuable the gold is. If gold is 24 carat, well, that's the highest ranking possible. That means it is 99.99% pure gold. But if it's something more like, say, 16 carat, that means it's not pure gold. It's instead an alloy made up of 16 parts gold, 8 parts some other metal. The highest purity a gold ring can be before it loses its magnetism is 18 carat. However, this then presents us a bit of a problem. By mixing gold with other metals, you start to lose gold gold's iconic yellow color. This then is how yeah. you achieve colors like white gold and rose gold by using silver or copper respectively as the alloy metal. Basically, this is just the jewelry industry's way of selling you less pure gold while still marketing it as gold gold. Probably yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably sort of style theory to this at some point. Anyway, the three most common metals to use as an alloy here that are magnetic are iron, cobalt, and nickel. But while they'll certainly give our gold ring the power of magnetism, they'll also give it a different color. Nickel yeah, they will won't yield just much more silver yellow. and white gold. Cobalt will turn the gold black and iron will produce blue gold. And while each of those are certainly cool colors and might possibly explain some of the other rings that we see floating around in this universe. Blue gold. I've never heard of that before. That's cool. It doesn't explain our main golden rings. To get the so... correct yellow gold color from a gold alloy, you would have to mix the gold with equal parts silver and copper, two metals which are notably not magnetic, which means that Sonic's rings cannot be made of gold. So we need ourselves a metal that's yeah, so they're water, most that's likely magnetic, plated. and also can appear golden in color. So does something like that exist? The answer is a resounding yes. Allow me to introduce you all to neodymium. Weirdly, despite being considered a rare earth metal, neodymium is about as common as other metals like nickel and Cobalt, which makes it perfect for our rings considering these things are just lying around Sonic's world by neodymium? the hundreds. And while neodymium is usually a silvery metal when it's in the ground, as it touches the air, it oxidizes, which turns it into a wonderful shade of yellowish gold. But that's not all. You can also turn huh, it into a whole okay. bunch of other colors like blue, purple, and pink, which would explain why there are all these other various colors of rings sprinkled across the Sonic games. But most importantly, neodymium is magnetic. And I mean, extremely magnetic. So much so that one of its most common uses neodymium is, well, magnets, right? 
single of gram of neodymium can lift an entire kilogram of steel. It is some powerful stuff, and the power of neodymium doesn't stop there. Neodymium magnets are very commonly used inside rechargeable batteries for companies like Tesla and their electric vehicles. Batteries equal energy, and while we've been talking about Sonic's rings as a form of currency, throughout the franchise, these rings are yeah. also said to contain some ring energy. They're a power source of that helps course. Sonic maintain his supersonic transformation, something that wouldn't really apply to a gold ring, but could very easily apply to a neodymium ring. So really, Sonic's gold rings are better described as his neodymium rings. And now that huh, we know what they're okay. made of, we can figure out how much a ring would be worth. All we need to figure out is the weight of these rings for our final value. And just like most things in math, there's an equation for that. Of mass course there is. density multiplied by volume. Neodymium yep, of has course. a density of 7 grams per cubic centimeter. So all we need to do is figure out their volume, and bam, we have ourselves our final number. Yeah, of course. Of a ring, or in geometrical terms, a torus, is a little more challenging than something like a sphere. With a sphere, all you need yeah. is a radius, and from there you can figure out pretty much everything else. But with a ring, you actually need two measurements. The Never mind, I'll just let him talk. Minor radius, which is the radius of the solid tube of gold, and the yeah. major radius, the radius from the center of the circle to the center of the tube. The easiest way to get both of these radii is with pixel measurements, comparing the size of the <laughs> ring to something else in the world around it that we know the measurement of, which in this case like is Sonic. Sonic himself. Canonically, Sonic is 100 centimeters tall. And if we take this shot from Sonic Unleashed, one of the games where he uses his rings as currency, this means that the major radius is 24.4 centimeters, or 9.6 inches, and the minor radius is 4.76 centimeters, or about 1.9 inches. From there, we just plug those numbers into this handy dandy formula for the volume of a torus, pi minor radius squared multiplied by 2 pi major radius. We get that these rings have a volume of 11,000 cubic centimeters or 666 cubic inches. Multiply the that devil. by the density ah. of neodymium, and we get ourselves a total mass of 76 kilograms or just about 170 pounds. You heard that right. That's Each a... individual giant sonic ring here is weighing over 100 pounds. I mean, that kind of shines Sonic's, like, speed in a whole new light uh, right there. But also, it shows why he sinks so readily if he's carrying a pocket full of these. Now, if these things were made of gold like everyone's been assuming, gold's price per pound is currently $22,250, meaning that a single large gold ring like this would be worth $4,717,000. Each ring. Sonic Jeez. would be able to collect one of these babies and just retire. Screw you, Eggman, I'm gonna go home and eat chili dogs with tails. Neodymium, though? Well, let's just say it's a lot more affordable as a metal. It yeah. used to be worth around $60 a kilogram because of how common it is, but with the increased demand for electric vehicles over the last several years, neodymium prices have surged. Right now, it's about double what it was, $127 a kilogram, or about $270 a pound. Expensive, yeah. but yeah, still quite a, a lot bit less cheaper than, than gold. gold which yeah. means that our $5 million giant gold ring is actually more like a $9,600 neodymium ring. Which is still, for a single ring, that's a lot of money. Though, granted, that's a ring that's fairly big, but still. Don't get me wrong, still plenty of money. And if he gets a hundred of these bad boys, he's not just getting an extra life, he's basically getting his own life back as he retires. Except <laughs> there is another issue here. The giant rings, they don't seem to be accurate to the size that these rings really are. You see, in most recent Sonic media, including both the games and new movies, Sonic's rings shrink in size to the proportions of a wedding ring when he picks them up. Probably help him to explain how he's able to hold so many in his, um, in his pockets, I guess? His anyway, gloves? that would help explain I don't how know. he's able to carry around multiple of these 200-pound behemoth rings without getting getting slowed down. The best shot that I could find to get a proper measurement of these from the games is this shot from the trailer of Sonic Unleashed, a game where he specifically uses the rings as currency. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details a second time, so after some careful pixel measurements and comparisons, we can determine that this smaller ring has a volume of 12.5 cubic centimeters or 0.76 cubic inches, giving us a weight of 0 0.09 kilograms, much more in the realm of plausibility. Okay, yeah, that, that would make <laughs> this neodymium ring worth, drum roll please. 11 bucks. To put that in perspective, in Sonic's newest game, Sonic Frontiers, your maximum ring capacity is 400 rings, which means Sonic is only carrying around 4,400 bucks. It's not a bad amount of cash by any means, but yeah, I mean, especially like to carry you on you. You're getting a gold ring the size of your fist. And speaking of rough deals, remember how I said that in some of the Sonic games, Sonic is paying somewhere like 30 rings for a single apple? Well, that right there would make the apple worth over $300. What was that I was saying before about like hyperinflation in post-war Germany?
The biggest problem in the Sonic universe isn't Robotnik, clearly, it is rampant price inflation. Though, then again, I guess it kind of checks out when your currency is floating in the air by the thousands. So, there you have it, friends. The true value of yeah. Sonic's Neodymium rings is 11 bucks. Not as valuable as we might have thought from a gold ring, but hey, they're 65,000 times more valuable than what Sega of America claimed in Sonic Speed Simulator, proving developers of classic 90s IP wrong. That is always a win in my book. But <laughs> hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. God, okay, it just... I mean, I... I mean, first of all, the rings being made out of Neo I'm sorry, I'm having so much trouble pronouncing it. Neo Dinium. And the fact that each one's worth like 11 bucks. I mean, granted, that's a lot more... One ring is still worth a lot more than, say, like, a single dollar. But that is still... And plus, he was talking in American dollars. It's like, I'm Canadian. <laughs> you have to add like about another like 25%, 20-30% on that. It's just... Uh, <laughs> oh, so yeah, that... I, again, I... I love these older style theories where it's all about like figuring out like math and like science and like trying to figure out what something's made of or how it works. It's just... Ah! Uh, I mean, granted, I still do love lore videos, but this, this is the good stuff right here. So yeah, as always, original video is linked in the description if you haven't seen it for some reason. Corner video will relate to my film theory reaction. And with all that out of the way, I hope you guys liked. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you have not, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.